Hello everyone, my name is Michael and welcome to another episode of the Selenium tutorial series. In this episode, we will see how we can be undetectable and basically we want to achieve websites to not detect that you are that we are using Selenium. And I will use as an example to log in to a Gmail account using Selenium. Basically, if we use normally, Gmail will detect you and when you try to log in, it will show you a message and it will basically block you, it will stop you from logging in. So first of all, I'll show you how we can log in to Gmail. We will see the error and then I'll show you ways to fix that. So yeah, if you are interested, hit the like button, subscribe and hit the bell notification so you don't miss any of my future episodes. And yeah, with that said, Let's get it started. So first of all, let's create a new Python file and let's name it undetectable selenium.py or actually let's just name it undetectable and let's copy an example. So let's go on main.py and let's copy the imports and also the way we start the browser. There we go. Now I'll open Google and I'll copy paste this URL for logging in to Gmail and let's paste it here. Let's basically replace the URL. So first of all, we want to enter the email. So let's find the selector for this email input. And if we go here, actually, let's just inspect. There we go. So this is the input. And now what we can do is copy and then copy selector. Okay, so this is an example. Let's replace our ID with the ID and actually let's do it one line. So we will try to find the element by the ID and then send keys. Now let's replace this method with the new method find underscore element and we will pass here something called by and we will under we will find that element by the CSS selector and then we give the CSS selector. So let's try it. Let's do test, not by CSS selector, by ID. Yeah, okay, let's replace that. So we will say element by ID. We give the ID and let's send some keys. So let's run it. And there we go. Now, next, we have to click the button, which is called next. So let's right click, click inspect and Let's again copy the selector. There we go. So let's say browser dot fire find element. Now we will use the CSS selector and there we go. Again, let's test it. Shall we enter it? Okay, now it didn't find the Google account and I'll enter one of my Google accounts. Okay, so for email, I created an email and let's replace the email here with the actual email. Or actually, let's make it more dynamic. So let's create a value up here and say email equal that and password or pass actually password equals test123 at dollar. There we go. And now let's use the email here. And now once we click next, the button next, let's do that. So we enter the email, we click next. Now we need to wait before we actually input the password. So let's see how we can do that. First of all, let's find the selector for the password. So I'll right click inspect and then let's go and copy and then copy selector. And let's go down here and let's say co actually password underscore selector and that's the selector and we can say that so web driver wait and then wait maximum 10 seconds until the element is located so we are waiting for the password to be located and then we can use the same thing here so we will send keys so this is like there we go okay so we got an error because we said by id now let's send that let's say css selector because it's actually the css selector not the id so let's try that that we enter the email the password and we got an error probably for the button right okay so let's see let's go here click inspect and let's get the updated selector because it probably it's probably different so let's say copy copy selector and let's replace it there we go okay it's actually different so let's say Let's rerun it. There we go. And the password. And we actually got in. Okay, so I just found the issue happens only when your account requires two-factor authentication or something like that. So as you see right here, when I'm when I try to log in with my main account, it says couldn't sign you in. The browser app may not be secure because it basically detects you are using Selenium. So there is a package called undetected Chrome driver and it basically applies some options to your puppeteer and 
basically gives you a puppeteer which is undetectable. Now, as it says, it's only for Chrome driver, it will not work for Firefox or something like that. But yeah, it's still very good. So let's use it. So first of all, you will have to run a pip install undetected Chrome driver if you haven't already. So make sure you do that. And then we will basically replace Selenium with this. So let's copy that and we will only the web driver will replace that and we will paste that there. And also the browser will be replaced with UC. There we go. Now, if I rerun it, and as you'll see, I'm using my main account as we saw previously, using an account that doesn't have two factor authentication, it will let you log in. But with two factor authentication accounts, it doesn't let you log in. So let's do that. Actually, I'm not sure if it has to do with two factor authentication or if with any settings on my account, probably because I make sure it is secure or something like that. But yeah, still. Okay, so the issue I just had was fixed by including that if statement right here. I'm not sure why that is, but I found the answer in Stack Overflow and that's what they proposed. And I did that and it actually works. So let me show you. So we are running the script and as you'll see now, after I enter my email, as you saw, it didn't show me the error message. So yeah, it basically let me log in now and it didn't detect my script as Selenium. So yeah, as you saw, we were able to make Selenium act like a human. So it wasn't detectable by Gmail. And if it's not detectable by Gmail, then mostly from any other websites, it will not be detectable as well. So yeah, I'll leave the link to the undetected Chrome driver down below so you can see the documentation yourself. Now, another way they can detect you isn't by detecting you are using Selenium, but by detecting you are doing multiple requests, thousands of requests in your IP address in the same location from your same computer. So a way to bypass that is using proxies. And if you don't know what proxies is, they are basically some IP address that you connect to from your Selenium script and you are basically transferring the request to that IP address so it's like that IP address is your computer so we can add an argument so first of all let's have some options so we can say options equals to uc dot options and then we can add an argument so we are basically adding some options and then as an argument we can pass the IP address the proxy server so here you add the IP address and the port. And now we have to add those options here. So we can say options equal to options. And that's how you can use the arguments, the options basically you have passed. Actually, you see don't have options, don't have the function options. So we are using the Chrome options from the web driver. So make sure you import it again because we had removed. And yeah, that's basically how you can use proxies. Now, another way is to make sure you don't use headless browser. The best way to be undetectable is to have a visible browser and not the headless browser. So make sure you are not using headless. And another great way is to save cookies and basically have a storage of your cookies and reuse them. And I'll show that in the next video. So have that in mind. And another option we can add is to use a user data directory. And that's basically your profile in Chrome. Let me show you an example. So we'll say options dot add argument and we will say dash dash user data dir, which is a directory equals to and here you want to add the folder to your Chrome profile. And that's the best way to be undetectable. Basically, if you use your Chrome profile and you have an account logged into it, it's really hard by using both these undetected Chrome driver and the user data directory because if you are using your profile you are basically a normal user and it's really hard to be detected. Okay so we have to go to Chrome and then version and right here you can find your profile path so I'll copy it and I'll paste it right here. Now what I suggest is you actually don't use profile and then the number of that profile but you actually use the default one so it will automatically pick your default profile and your default profile usually is the last profile you use and that's again even better to use the default one and not a specific one.
So yeah, that's another great way to be undetectable. The code will be down in the description. So if you want to check this code out, click the link down in the description, my GitHub repository, and go to the undetectable.py file. And here you will have this code. So yeah, if you enjoyed the video, let me know down in the comments what you would like to see next. And make sure you hit that like button, subscribe, and you hit that bell notification so you don't miss any of my future videos on this series and any other kind of videos. So yeah, with that said, See you in the next video where we are going to see how we can use cookies and basically reuse them so we can save cookies and reuse them.